Welcome. All right, so today, um, a few of the topics that we're going to be talking about is introducing ourselves, um, the new leadership, because last meeting in April, um, several people volunteered to become part of the leadership team and certain committees. Um, we did several onboarding meetings and with the new leaders, and we just want to check in on that. I think there might have been a couple of pending things that we'll still need to kind of onboard you for to do the transition. Um, and then we'll talk, talk about communications, fundraising programs, the conference meeting planning, and do some networking at the end, and then set the schedule for the next meeting. Okay, and George is with us today. George is one of the senior advisors. So if you wanna introduce yourselves in the, let's see how many of us. Oh, I think we could do it with the mic. So there's 11 of us, we're not too many. Um, if you just want to go around, say your name, country, what university you're at in your role, um, and what about system dynamics inspires you? Who would like to start? Uh, I can go. I, I think I want to be able to join into that. So, okay. Uh, Lucas. So, okay. Uh, I'm Lucas. Uh, I'm the in the master in system dynamics in Bergen. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, what inspires me about system dynamics is the uh, ability to integrate the different perspectives into a into something tangible where people can refer to uh, and test their assumptions, and based on that, uh, take more informed decisions in the real world. I think that's yeah. Great. Thank you, Lucas. Who else would like to go? Isra? I can go. Yeah. Okay. I am Isra. I am uh, originally from Sudan. I study in Norway. What I love about system dynamics is that it can be applied to any type of problems. And I am particularly interested in the sustainability and energy transition. Thank you. <laughs> Abadi? Hi. Arthur? Hello, uh, I'm Arthur. Uh, sorry for the camera, but I'm commuting right now. Uh, I am from Brazil, but I live in Madeira Island, where I'm uh, founding Oceano, a company that wants to uh, help a ecological restoration project to be financially independent. I want to use a system dynamic uh, exactly to target this problem, uh, modeling the main problems that the ecological restoration projects uh, suffer uh, when seeking to finance uh, itself, themselves independent. That's it. Thank you. Abadi? Hi, I'm Abadi. I'm currently a PhD student at uh, Liverpool John Morris University in the UK. I'm more interested on system dynamics because uh, I'm looking on the supply chain resilience aspects that really touch different uh, actors to participate. So I want to see the dynamics among the different actors that can be involved in the supply chain. That's why I'm more, more inspired by the system dynamics, specifically on the simulation aspect. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Who else would like to go? George? Um, someone else was just about to speak. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, 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 can, I can go. I, or I don't know, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Uh, my name is Turner Canty. Um, I'm in uh, the City University of New York. Um, and uh, I work as a, a research assistant. And um, I, I find SD to be uh, really useful both in uh, community engaged research and in kind of building up evidence from data that uh, otherwise would be hard to synthesize and 
kind of expanding people's uh, mental models and, and ideas about most, I work mostly with public health problems. So I, I find it to be a really useful tool and also a really uh, engaging way sometimes if, if you kind of get the right audience to um, make decision-making and, and get people uh, to buy into a problem. So uh, that's my, my short, short version. Thanks. Great. Um, good evening. I hope it's evening now in Bergen. Um, I'm Mwinde Alan Mayaba, a PhD student at University of Zambia uh, with focus um, in primary health care. And so um, part of my objective of the PhD, my PhD, the third objective that I have is that I need to develop a systems dynamic uh, model um still not very sure whether I can go the quantitative or the qualitative way, depending on how much help I think I'll have. Um, and that makes me to be interested in uh, learning the systems dynamic uh, course uh, across the board. Um, the complexity of primary health care is beyond the narrow understanding that it's just a system interested in funding, but there should be community response. Uh, there should be willingness. Uh, however, I'm looking at this approach, um, looking at the perspective of people who are living with disabilities. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wendy. Mwinde, did you say that you are in Zambia? Yes, I am in Zambia at the University of Zambia. Because I was just in Zambia, uh, Botswana, uh, on a 18-day tour back in November. Ah, okay. Great to hear. Great to hear. It's too um, bad did I you... didn't know you were there. We could have waved, you know? <laughs> sure, sure. I would have, I would have had the privilege of uh, shaking a hand with you. Oh, thank you. Well, it's a small <laughs> hand, but you could shake it if you want. Um, and have those deep conversations with George. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, I suppose I should say, of course, by my beard and obvious age, I trace back to the early days. Um, Jay Forrester was my PhD advisor. Um, and um, for nickel knowledge, I founded the journal in our field, if that warms your heart. And uh, I'm still glad to see that, the, that it is uh, still ongoing. By the way, I gave Jay the, uh, Jay's only uh, contribution to the journal was the color. I gave him the opportunity to pick the color and he said, any color you want, as long as it's the color of a Mercedes. <laughs> so there you go. There's another piece of nickel knowledge. Um, my, my help here is to, uh, uh, Let's see. If you if you need things from long ago, I will probably be able to supply them. And I'm also here to try to help you um, save you from overextending yourselves. That's yeah, all. Yeah, thank you, George. <laughs> that was one of the points in in Martha's reflection document that I had asked uh, the new student leaders to take a look at before this meeting. <laughs> yes, good. It, you have a tough job and making it easier is important. Thank you. Can you articulate a little bit about like, how to not expand so much? Like what limit is enough? 
I think Isra is asking, um, what kind of advice do you have to not overextend ourselves? And she didn't say burnout, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, um, I don't know if you want it early on, but uh, my biggest concern is that uh, in you, you run your own conference before the main conference. And um, it involves reviewing and uh, session planning and all kinds of things. And it I've long wondered if you couldn't uh, get what you really want out of that pre-conference gathering by simply getting rid of your conference or getting rid of reviewing for it. Have a massive uh, um, poster session and let people wander around and meet each other and get rid of the stuff that takes you so much time and uh, concentrate on the stuff that allows you to meet each other. It's important to realize that if you stay in the field, you're gonna know each other for the next 30 years. My colleague in the field was David Anderson, is David Anderson, and he and I have been working together for almost 50 years. You want to know each other. So that would, my, my concern is, the, is your pre-conference conference, and if you could get rid of it, I think you could substitute something much more wonderful for it, a party. <laughs> Brad Celia isn't here. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Um, I will yeah, check out. So I guess... <laughs> and by the way, um, if if I say anything that that gets in the way of what you folks want, uh, you should ignore me. Thanks, George. Um, we do appreciate your your insights over the the time period that you've been able to you know be in the field and also see kind of the evolution of soc and the student chapter yes <laughs> um lkn yes <laughs> i don't know why, why that's my name but anyways so my name is Lennart neumerker i'm from germany i'm studying at the university of heidelberg right now um and yeah what's I'm studying economics, and so what inspires me about system dynamics is mainly to have like a new perspective away from the usual way we see economics, and also kind of get an idea how to handle with uh, nonlinear situations. Yes. Yes, you can actually edit your name if you want. There's the little yes. three dots no up by your. <laughs> that way we can actually see your name. Um, let's see. So I think Steve wrote in the chat, but Steve is from Fort Worth, not technically a student, but I'm signed up for summer school in July. He's really interested in the modeling aspect. Um, Marius? Yes. Do you want to present yourself? Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Tukpasi Marius Ezras. I'm from Benin Republic in West Africa. Uh, but currently I live in Algeria because of my study. So I'm a master's student in energy engineering at uh, Pan African Institute of Water and Energy, including climate change. If I'm here, um, because I want to work on, I want to use a system dynamics to model Benin sustainable energy as my master's thesis. So I'm, I'm, I'm new. I don't know anything about the system dynamics. Just now I start reading about that. So I will be happy to learn. Thank you. Several of you are interested in the topics related to sustainability, climate change, yes. energy transition. So that's great. <laughs> um, let's see, did we miss anyone? Okay. I think everyone's introduced themselves. 
Steve, I don't know if you can actually uh, say anything or if you're at work and need to stay quiet and just chat. <laughs> Steve's also, yeah, he's going to be chatting. He's also interested in nonlinear modeling. Okay, great. All right, I am going to move to the next slide. So our, the leadership as of April was Daniela, Celia, Rachel, and Yu Hong. Um, Celia, Rachel, and Yu Hong are organizing the SOC um, with some help from Daniela as well. And then we have brought on more student chapter leaders. In last meeting, um, we brought on Ella, she, as well as Arthur, Isra, Lucas. Um, they came on board. So Ella is going to be leading the communications. Arthur is going to be leading fundraising. Isra is going to be leading programs and the peer mentoring program. And then Lucas is secretary. And then we've got our committees. So Turner's also um, on the communications committee. The fundraising committee also includes Isra and Abadi. Um, the programs and mentoring committee will have Arthur and Turner as well as Isra. And then Lucas, if someone else wants to help out with what is, you know, event planning and scheduling the events and meetings and whatnot, we can do that as well. And then the senior advisors, George is here today, and Birgit. Birgit's at the University of Bergen, and several of you are studying at the University of Bergen. Um, there's a lot of interest um, among students at the University of Bergen, and several of them are also volunteering for the conference. Um, so I just want to check in with those of you who are now on the new leadership. Um, how has the onboarding process been? Did you get a, a sense of kind of how we've done things in the past? Do you have more questions? Do you feel like there's something that we haven't yet addressed that you want to get a hold on so that I can schedule that? <laughs> uh, the only question I have uh, is regarding the uh, the meetings. For example, uh, can uh, we arrange meetings uh, on our base, or uh, who should I invite for for meetings? Uh, usually, just the members of the of the funding raising, for example, or can I extend it to others? Um, that is a good question. So, I mean, you can, if it's like fundraising topics, feel free to just invite the committee people outside of that. I don't know. I guess you could discuss it with the committee and see like if there's someone that might have, I don't know, more experience in fundraising and might be able to help with ideas or planning something. I don't see an issue with that. Um, great. That's for, great. Like, okay. As for the regular student chapter meetings, Lucas is going to be um, kind of scheduling those through the a button that we have on the website to submit events. And then we advertise the student chapter meetings in things like the In the Loop newsletter. Um, ideally, things would get scheduled at least two weeks in advance so we have time to promote it. Um, and then we can set up kind of reminder emails about these types of events. Um, yeah. Any other thoughts about the onboarding process? Questions? I, I don't necessarily have a, um, it's, it might not be specific to the onboarding, but, um, I did want to see what the expectation was in terms of, so we had discussed updating the website and, uh, it sounded like I, I don't know, Ella's not on this call, but um, if there, if I should prioritize that to to kind of get it done. Um, <laughs> now that we have like the new bios and the headshots and everything, you know. Yeah, um, I think that would be helpful if someone on the committee would uh, volunteer to do that. I am not sure if you've gotten a chance to meet with Raquel to look at how to use the website. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm all set up. So I, I might just go ahead and do it. I just want to make sure I don't want to change anything that is, uh, you know. So you can take Daniela or no, leave Daniela there. Um, yeah. I think there might be some old SOC organizers from previous years. Um, you can take them off. <laughs> Um, and then you can, I, if you need that information, I think it's in these presentations, which are also in the shared Google drive. Yep. And so you can use Daniela or, um, Yuhong's photo and Rachel Thompson's photo. Um, if you need a different format, I can send those to you because I've got those. Um, yeah. Cool. So I think it's an easy ahead. pick. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch then. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm also familiar with the website if you need any support. Um, I know that the newsletter is something that we haven't specifically talked about. There's a, a person that we think may have had to do with the newsletter before, William or Willem, I think. So I'm going to reach out to him. I have not done that yet. Um, another thing that we've been talking about it, with the home office is getting our MailChimp platform um, available to chapters and SIGs. I don't think that's totally ready yet, but that's been a way that we've been able to create email campaigns and newsletters and stuff like that. So that might be a future opportunity for the communications community. Could I uh, speak for a second? Sure, George. Okay. Um, as I'm listening to you, I'm sensing that there's a bunch of tasks uh, and some people know about the tasks that are ahead or current, and maybe some of you don't. So perhaps one of the items on your immediate agenda is making sure this group has a full sense of what the what the looming tasks are. And adjacent to that is... Um, the uh, the problems that people have gotten into in the past related to the student chapter. And the question, are any of the tasks in the problem list? So Deal? you have more historical knowledge about that. I think we're all kind of clueless. <laughs> I don't know that well, any of us have had much of a involvement okay. in the past. Well, I, I don't want to tell you what your problems are because, well, I don't know. Um, but it does seem that that having a having an overview of what you guys have to do is really important because you may discover that what you have to do is more than you can do. So the next slides do cover some of that. Um, they're kind of like, you know, fundraising. These are the types of things that we're gonna be doing in fundraising. Um, the meeting at the conference, that kind of thing. Yeah, great. And we have discussed these in some of the onboarding meetings as well. What are the tasks at hand? And some new fresh ideas have come from that as well. Um, and so one of those is a proposal that we're gonna discuss in the, programs part. Okay, I will move on to Okay. Um so yeah, this is Turner's question <laughs> updating the student chapter page with the new leadership and committee members. Um social media So I'm not really clear on that if um, if the student chapter had or has social media channels that are different from the societies. Um, I don't know if anyone has gotten a sense of that. George, do you recall? Um, I think there has been a social media presence that's focused on the, um, can I call it the student chapter? Is that the right way to say this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think there has been in the past. Um, it's, a it's the kind of thing that, uh, never gets used unless there's a crisis. 
Okay, so it, it wasn't very proactive. It was more reactive. <laughs> I, I think I think that's true, but I, I'm really not sure. Um, and if um, if there's someone among you, some group among you that's really hot to trot about social media, then you should fire that up. Otherwise, um, the the standard social media of emails works just fine. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I, I realize I'm a very old person and I use email and very young people use texts, right? Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe they want to create a WhatsApp group. Um, there you go. Okay, fine. Because <laughs> a lot of people outside of the States tend to use WhatsApp. It's a great well, way for it could be that in place of the phrase social media, you want to have, how do we want students to communicate with each other? How do students want to communicate with each other? That's the better way of saying it. Ideas? For those of you who are part of the student chapter? I think a group chat would be nice, a WhatsApp group chat. I'm going to add that to this. So it might be helpful if everyone put their um, phone number in the chat and your name so that afterwards I can send the chat um, to Lucas and then Lucas can set up a WhatsApp group chat. Would that be helpful? Um, any other that's fine. You'd like to use for communicating? Okay. Um, the newsletter can also kind of be on standby until we get a sense of how that's been done in the past and um, how you'd like to do it moving forward. Okay. So the next topic is the fundraising for 2024. So the the platform that we've used in the past has been Rally Up. Um, we showed those on the fundraising committee um, about Rally Up and how to use it. I think we shared also the information for logging in. I think it's at the on the rolling notes, if I recall. Um, and then some ideas were brought up uh, of selling t-shirts at the conference. Um, so we've asked Birgit about vendors for t-shirts and I'll send that information to you um, so that you can kind of start to get quotes and that kind of thing to get a sense of t-shirt sales. And then uh, Rebecca brought up lanyards. Not sure if this might be of interest to sell lanyards at the conference. Um, in the past, at the conference, we've just kind of had little, a little string thing that holds the name badge. But um, sometimes these are also useful at conferences, or you can hang your keys there, or your credential, or whatever. Um, not sure if that sounds appealing to, to anyone, or if that's something that we should just discard. Or if there, you have other ideas for fundraising, ways to raise funds for um, student chapter activities, scholarships for students, et cetera. Yes, uh, exactly. Uh, we we discussed a bit on, the, on our last meeting about uh, starting a consulting club. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I put that in programs. I didn't put that in fundraising, but we can, if that seems like yes. it's a more... Activity. Yeah, this, it's kind of a mixture of the peer mentoring group and the uh, funding raising. So we can uh, offer uh, services for the 
for companies uh, uh, and clients for a discounted fee uh, in order in order to fund raising for the student chapter. Uh, in the other hand, we we train uh, the students, uh, gain some experience, field experience, uh, modeling with system dynamics, and uh, expose ourselves to the to the clients that uh, want to solve their problems using uh, system dynamic solutions. I think it, uh, it has uh, a good possibility of it, uh, going well. So I think we just need to make a meeting to discuss further details and see if everybody think it's a good idea to proceed. Turner, did you want to say something? Yeah, well, the uh, I did have a question about Rally Up. So if you oh. order from Rally Up, would they be getting would someone have to bring them from the U.S. to Bergen, or do they get shipped straight there? Okay, so rally up. The way that works, um, I don't know that we really like order from rally up. The way we did it last year is we actually brought things to Chicago, and uh -huh. we put up the photos of the items, um, the description, and kind of just crossed our finger that those who won the items for the auction in this case um, were in person in Chicago because the shipping cost of sending it, you know, to abroad or something is even more. Um, mm -hmm. So that's how we did it um, last year. This year, we're going to be bringing less things to Bergen just because the shipping cost is much higher to ship things there. So Rebecca can bring some things in her suitcase um, because I think she has some benefits for flying and so she can bring a suitcase with some things. Um, and if there's some things that we can print in Bergen, like t-shirts, that would be ideal. Yeah, that's um, kind of what I was wondering with the t-shirt printing idea, which does seem, I mean, lanyards are cool, but sometimes, sometimes I think people think that they should get lanyards for free. You know what That's I mean? what I told Rebecca. I was like, um, sometimes these are just like part of the conference and it's not something that might be as attractive to sell. Right. So I wonder if the t-shirt idea would be the most maybe profitable. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's other things that could be sold too, like, I don't know, coffee mugs or something. Um, there's, you know, endless possibilities, but we got to think about the cost that one puts into making these as well. And then you got to recover that cost and have some profit for the student chapter. <laughs> Any other ideas on fundraising? So I'm going to go to the next slide and pull up the consulting club proposal that I think it was Arthur had sent. I'm going to add this in the chat so that you can all look at it. Reading room participant. Do we have a reading room participant? Yeah. Steve. Looks like Steve. Okay. So if you can pull up this document, I'll pull it up too. Yay. And share it. Oh, okay. Okay. Project definition, target group, why implementation? Yeah. Uh, okay. The consulting club. Do you want to present on this, Arthur? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, did you you choose? I can I can say some stuff, but uh, it's up to. Yeah, I mean, we just want to yeah kind of let the student chapter members know about this and discuss it. Okay, so uh, just 
us to tell a bit should be a uh, to train students in real projects. So uh, it's a way to solve real problems while raising funds for, for the society while, uh, so we can find more uh, scholarships uh, along the years. You can uh, can change this life. So uh, the idea is really clear. Uh, to exercise the entrepreneurial skills to run a consulting firm in the uh, So, those willing to participate to deliver a small project for its content uh, for real clients that we we should look for or attract the society. Maybe there are projects that for the idea is to bring uh, visibility to the business and uh, increase our network. I think we lost some of what you said, yeah. unfortunately. The audio was cutting in and out. Yeah, but... the audio is kind of cutting off. So basically, um, oh, uh, could it be Arthur, your your audio is cutting in and out, so I'll kind of summarize what's here. Um, so basically, the idea was that um, students and early career members can participate in this consulting club as a way to gain experience in SD modeling, have experience working directly with clients um, to help them resolve organizational issues. Um, and so that's kind of a skill building and also a way to earn some funds for the student chapter by charging a nominal fee to, um, to clients. So this is also somewhere where George might have a, an opinion about this, that maybe some senior advisors can kind of be part of this and help guide you in this process. Um, <laughs> consulting perspective or from a modeling perspective? Um, okay, so that would be um, a Exactly, good exactly. I, I, I do have a thought. Um, back in 2014, <laughs> uh, I wrote a paper, conference paper that was part of, that was used by the uh, policy uh, committee of the System Dynamics Society for a workshop. It was a little paper about um, the growth of a management science field, and it ended with uh, a bunch of uh, suggestions and cautions. One of the cautions is what you're proposing right here. If you want the field to grow, the work you show to, uh, uh, to companies and so on um, has to be really good. And you're proposing that uh, students sort of in the early to mid stages of their uh, learning about system dynamics are going to go consulting with firms. And my guess is unless you have some senior support, um, it's, it's, it has the possibility of having a negative effect on growth of the field instead of a positive effect. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Uh, I was thinking about it, but uh, if we analyze, uh, for sure, senior members would be real helpful, and uh, and I think they will be willing to participate. But uh, if we see like consulting firms like. Uh, uh, bank company McKinsey and uh, the mainstream consulting company, they usually 
uh, let the hard work for the early careers. Uh, so the, the, the hard work is usually done by early careers that uh, in consultation with senior members uh, deliver a great job. Like, uh, so I truly believe that uh, the student chapter can uh, deliver a great job uh, for sure with the support with senior members. Uh, and uh, they, the clients will also understand that uh, they are being offering a, a, a consulting firm that is starting and also uh, it's a experimentation for the student chapter. They will receive a discounted fee and uh, I think we can manage this risk. But for sure, this point is, is uh, really important. So the more senior members we can attract, the best will be our deliver, I think. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, I do like this idea. I will say um, there might be, in terms of being overextended, I think there might be a bit of a risk there in terms of how much you can generate. I think something like this, it, it's very, it's, it's fun to think about it in, in the sense of almost like a hackathon or something where you're trying to solve a problem. And maybe there's, you could ask a senior person if there's a problem that they've been working on that they would like help with um, and maybe approach it rather than from like a very practical standpoint where you'd have like a deliverable at the end of the, uh, you know, maybe a couple months worth of work. Uh, I, I think what George mentioned, if you're going outside of, of the society, you do kind of run the risk of delivering something that might not be um, the highest quality or, or feasible within a short period of time. But I don't know what the time is that you're thinking, Arthur. And I, and I, I actually really, I, I do like this idea. I'm just thinking in terms of almost devil's advocate here, like being uh, somebody who is already somewhat overextended myself, <laughs> you know. In the old days um, at MIT, there was actually a course uh, that engaged the students in the course with consulting for firms. And the faculty member who led the course was the, uh, the attempt at the assurance that what the students were doing was great work. It, it takes effort to make sure that it's excellent work. I'll put in my two cents about this too. Um, when I was studying system dynamics as a master's student, um, Peter Hoven taught a course about group model building and he worked with different community organizations to figure out what are some like dynamic problems in the community that each student group could work on. Um, so as part of this course, we had, I don't know, three or four of us per group. And we worked with, in my case, I worked with the school district in figuring out um, what are the factors that influence or in, and, and are impacted by academic achievement. Um, so we worked with different stakeholders doing interviews. We you know created a whole uh, group model building scripts. And then we d did the previous interviews. And then we had a, a session with administrators, teachers, parents, and students all in the room um, where we did a causal loop diagram um, and we had, you know, variable elicitation strategies and whatnot. Um, so it was a way to get kind of the system in the room. But it was very clear that we are students, we're in the learning process. Um, this was a free service in this case because we were in a course and all that. So it was, you know, and we were guided by our professor. Um, so that is kind of common in certain courses. And from my position in, in the home office in the society, this is something that we've struggled with, um, with the society. Oftentimes clients will come to us and they have a project and we, there's not that many people that we know and trust within the system dynamics community to carry out a consulting project and work with a client. So there's certain like academics who, you know, have very high modeling skills, very um, quality work, but they don't have time. 
So we have been struggling to um, kind of have a network that we can trust to do these modeling projects because we do want to also kind of protect the reputation of the field by providing quality work. Um, but at the other, on the other side, like how do we get students and people who are early in their career kind of the mentorship to be able to do this kind of work, have an opportunity for students to get engaged in client projects, maybe with an expert and be there for support um, to kind of learn how this process works. How do you work within a company? Um, how do you present the work and communicate it in a way that they can understand and it's not too, too much jargon? How to engage them in the process so that they see the, the practical part of the work and kind of change their mental models. Um, so yeah, it's a struggle. I would almost think like it might be in interesting to do it like a, a, a different type of mentoring program where you have experts in the field and they invite students to be part of this so that they can learn in the process or something like that. Uh, that's all excellent. Uh, I invented an idea in this direction years ago and no one has liked it. So I'll give it to you so you guys can dislike it as well. The idea was that uh, there are plenty of consultants out there that don't have time to publish papers, but they're doing magnificent work. And there are plenty of graduate students who would love to have published papers. So here's the idea. Uh, consultants contract with uh, universities that have good system dynamics programs and get linked up with graduate students, and graduate students ghostwrite the paper, they become the last author on the paper, and the guys who actually did the work become the first authors, and the quality of the work published is guaranteed by the consultants, and the student gets a publication. Why don't you do that? That's the, the, by the way, that silence is exactly what I've gotten every time I've suggested this idea. So you're, you're right with the mainstream of George, this. George, just, just to be clear, George. What? Just to be clear, just to be clear and more credibility. Um, would the student pay for consultancy as part of our fundraising, or it's just a matter of the visibility of publishing the papers ourselves? Thank you. Uh, well, you wouldn't publish them yourselves. The guys who did the work, the consultants would publish them. You'd help them write it. In fact, you may write the whole thing. And yes, you would do it for free because look at what you're getting. You're getting the highest level of understanding of the way consultant work goes and you're getting a publication. Yeah, but uh, the problem is we need uh, to fundraise more. We need to finance the student chapter. Uh, and uh, I, I know like it will be a uh, massive improvement to have publications, but it does not generate income for the society, for the student let, chapter. Let me, let me uh, suggest that I withdraw here. When I toss out an idea like this, let's not argue about it. Uh, that is to say, I don't need to be involved in talk arguing about it. You guys talk about it in your um, after this meeting, after whatever conversations follow on this meeting. Um, I don't want you to decide now to do what I just said to do. Um, it's been a very controversial idea and people haven't adopted it. So it's probably a crummy idea. Uh, but there's something in there that's probably a good idea, and you guys can talk about it. But let's not let's not argue now whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. If you guys can figure out how to raise money by uh, for the uh, student conference by uh, doing uh, let's say mini consulting projects, please go ahead. Uh, exactly. Uh, your your contribution is, is fantastic to stress the idea. Uh, uh, that's why 
we are discussing it. Thank you very much, George. It's fantastic to to hear uh to hear other thoughts so we can uh adapt the project and uh and uh, sharpen the knife to to do it properly. Yep. I just want to help. So I'll also bring up another point um about fundraising. So I think Rebecca said that the student chapter actually does have thousands of dollars already raised. Right now, it's just kind of sitting there. Um, so one of the things that the fundraising committee should probably think about is, what are our goals? Why are we fundraising? What are we fundraising for? How much money do we need? How do we plan to use it? To evaluate also what you do. Is it necessary to charge for these services? Or should we think of it more as a, a mentorship opportunity? to get kind of senior people to, you know, bring you on board almost as apprentices um, so that you can learn in this process. I see it as kind of like a career development opportunity uh, for people who are studying system dynamics so that you have other alternatives besides just going into academia. You, you know, if you have this apprenticeship project um, you could potentially, you know, gain more consulting skills and go into that. But it's it's a topic that you guys can discuss whether it makes sense um, and and how to go about it. Um, and so I'll move to the slide about why you should do it. I, and how does it help you get your PhD very quickly? Mm -hmm. So this is the why that Arthur had. Then the main outcome of this project is engaging young people in solving real problems. It is important to expose our members to the difficulties of convincing stakeholders about the systems thinking approach. And the second objective is to raise funds for the chapter in order to reach more students in the coming years. So we need a little model here. This is the issue. Great. Um, these are the solutions, the problems, solutions. This is, he sees it as a reinforcing loop. Solutions network leads to clients, clients leads to problems. Okay, network and funds leads consulting time. Okay, well, this is something to think about. Um, implementation. Members, mi minimal yeah. starting knowledge, availability, knowledge roadmap, structure, evaluate senior member participation, define resources and compensation, clients, which companies are close to the society, define a baseline ticket, um, evaluate if there's any conflict of interest with other SDS projects and initiatives, Solutions, how to communicate our solution, what are the deliverables, what would be a reasonable pro project time frame. Yeah. This is just a short list of ideas we we should uh, reunite to discuss, like so we can build this idea better. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we are pretty much at time. So I kind of want to finish off this so we can get, you guys can discuss this more in the next meeting um, or an internal programs and fundraising meeting. Um, so I'm going to go back to this real quick because I want to schedule the next student chapter meeting and briefly discuss the conference meeting of the student chapter. So I gave Lucas the link to a form where he can schedule the student chapter meeting at the conference, because I realized that that's not on the conference agenda right now. Um, so he can set that up. Um, and then you guys can discuss in more detail. There's still time before the conference. The conference is in August. So you can get a sense of what are the topics that you want to discuss during that meeting. Um, SOC. 
So in case any of you are interested in volunteering for SOC, I'm going to add the link to SOC volunteering in the chat. Okay, and the next meeting. Um, when would you all like to meet next? In a month? In July? I think it would be important to have a big meeting with you know the student chapter prior to the conference, but you can do smaller meetings within committees um, that you organize yourselves before that too. Thoughts as to when the next meeting should be so that um, Lucas can put it on the society event calendar. Maybe in a month, so we have enough time to organize ourselves. Okay. End of June, is there a particular day and time that works well for people? We've done the last two meetings on a Friday. I don't know if Fridays are ideal for people um, or if maybe a Thursday. Let's try Thursday maybe. So we, we see if we have more people. So maybe, let's see, June 27th. I'm just gonna get a sense real quick what's on the event calendar so that we're not conflicting with something like a seminar series at the same time, because this time, um, 11 o'clock New York time is the same time the seminar series happens. So sometimes people like to go to those as well. Okay, here's the June 26th, we have a seminar series, policy council meeting. Oh, we have a practitioner networking session on June 27th at this time, which is a Thursday. If you leave it on Friday, you'll at least get this group. Yeah. I don't know why Ella couldn't attend. Um, I think she's one of the people that wasn't able to attend today. But we could do Friday the 28th. There's nothing on the society agenda on that day. Do you want to try doing Friday the 28th? <clears throat> uh, we could do a slightly different time than this if that would work. Could I make would a suggestion? Would one hour later work for people? Yes. How about that? Not for the European people. <laughs> one hour okay. later, okay. one hour earlier. I. So I usually have a meeting always at 11 o'clock on Friday. So I don't know that I'll necessarily need to be in the next meeting now that we're transitioning over, but. It's okay, it's okay. We, we don't want to go on without you. <laughs> Eventually we'll be transitioning over. <laughs> um, so would uh, 10 o'clock- Could I suggest that somehow time, between you know, now and the, the time you, you invent, um, a, uh, uh, the next meeting that some sort of list is brought up, is made up of what you actually have to get done by the conference. Do you know what you have to do? Right. That is true. And if you don't have anything to do, then you don't have to meet. Isn't that good? <laughs> I don't think that's true. No, there are things that do need to get done. Quotes for the t-shirts, for example, actually printing t-shirts, deciding how many, how, what price you're gonna set, um, <clears throat> getting the rally up, set up. So that's the fundraising side. 
Um, and then Lucas will set up the meeting and set up the meeting for the conference itself as well. Those are kind of some of the main things. In terms of okay. So would 10 a.m. New York time on Friday, the 28th of June work? Yes, yes. Fantastic. Friday, June 28th, 10 a.m. New York time. Okay. Lucas, you got that? <laughs> okay. All right. We will be in touch and I'll be in touch by email. Feel free to ask me any questions in the meantime as well, the um, email. Um, and Lucas, I'll also send you the chat and um, I will upload this video of this meeting to the student chapter channel on our YouTube as well, in case you wanna share it with anyone who wasn't able to come today. All right, I'm going to stop the recording.